What's up guys, it's Jen and I've got my trusty assistant, B the installer here with me today, <laughs> I'm taking over. We are gonna be taking a look at this awesome TV from Sony. It is the A95K, it's a QD OLED. I hear really great reviews about this and B will have some more to share, so uh, what do you got? I am excited because this TV is, well, it's the first of its kind or second of its kind, I guess, with the S95B from Samsung, but this QD OLED, one TV of the year at the Valley Electronics 4K shootout. So super excited to have it in the house. Take our time showing you the new features since it's the first of its kind for Sony. It has a stand that is backwards, forwards. You can put it up against the wall. Very bright and vibrant TV. So I'm excited to get all that, set it up, show you some content before comparing it to our A90J OLED from Sony. So we're gonna have Master Series versus Master Series and more videos to come. It's gonna be awesome, so stick around. Now before we get into it, make sure that you smash the like button Set the notifications bell to all so you can be notified when we have a new upload and don't forget to subscribe. So this TV is arguably the best TV in the world, but it's only available in 65 inch and smaller. And you know on our channel, we do a lot of huge TVs. So do you wanna go bigger or best? Let us know in the comments below. Let's do it. Let's do it. I'm so excited. Okay. Let's do it, get a knife, get a knife, let's go. So B, you were just in New York at the TV shootout and you got to see this TV. Why don't you tell us a little bit about it? Yeah, I mean, it was pretty awesome. This TV was amazing. And funny enough, both QD OLEDs actually beat the LG G2 for best TV of the year. So it was very interesting because that says something about the QD technology that it's first on the scene here, it's first year, and it went first and second in the 4K category. So that was pretty interesting. Now there were some aspects of the G2 that kind of got robbed. So I don't know if I necessarily feel like the results were exact, but you know what? It still wouldn't have been number one, the G2. So this was definitely the best TV. Okay, so let's start from the top and work our way down. So this looks like part of the back plate. Yeah. They have some of those plastic pieces that kind of cover up where the feet can go or where the HDMIs can go. So it must be something like nice. that. I like it. So we've got our setup guide and our little packet of goodies and, and our batteries and cords, all that kind of good stuff. I think the remote is separate. Okay, it looks like the remote just Ooh. fell out of the bag. We got a little, little pewter gray Ooh. right here, looking good. This is the remote of all remotes. It's yeah. one remote to rule them all. Ooh, speaking of that, Lord of the Rings show comes out. What? Mm-hmm, mm. in September. Got some parts of the stand here. And I'm assuming these are also part of the stand Covers as well. or something, Covers, yeah. yeah. And... Um, that is the new Bravia cam. Oh. So we actually have a camera that you can do duo. You can, I, I think it's Skype. I mean, I don't know if anyone Skypes except us with my, grand, <laughs> with my parents. But it has, you can do duo video and it actually follows you around the room and such, so. I like yeah. this. We've, we've talked about this before. Yes. I think that's gonna be a really cool feature. Absolutely. Especially we will use it if no one yeah. else does, but we will. Yes, yeah, so who cares? Yeah. Nice. Uh, by the way, I don't know what this guy is doing over here, but he's looking for squirrels, I guess. Yeah. Caesar, you find anything? Yeah? No. <laughs> Anyways. This looks like maybe a clip to clip the camera on. And then we've got a couple more back plates. Cool. Sony's been giving us a lot of back plates this year. Okay, so we got all this stuff out, yeah? Mm -hmm. Awesome. Let's put the, you want to pick it back up? We got to take the plastic pieces off and pop these suckers off. I think pulling off the top, if it's 65 inch or smaller, is easy. 77, 83 inch, 98 inch big ones like we've had, <laughs> it's easier to break the box in half and pull. So just make sure if you pick the top off that you have someone kind of watching the TV because sometimes they'll go. This one has a huge stand and it's very heavy. There's no way it's tipping, but I'll ask Jen just to watch so we don't uh, have an injury. <laughs> I've only dropped one Sony so far in my career as a YouTuber. Okay, let's get this sucker off. Lift it up. I got the box, you got the TV? Sure. I got it, all right. Thank you, thank you. So it shows us just taking the stand out, putting the pieces on there, either forward or backwards, and then just picking up the TV out and setting it on the stand. So we'll do that. We'll connect the two pieces to the stand and then we'll set it up for you. So since we can have the stand go facing forwards or facing backwards, how are we gonna do it? I like the low profile look, so let's go having the stand go back so we just see nothing but TV. I think that's a cool look. I like it. All right, you wanna help me take this out? Mm -hmm. So let's take the heavy stand out. Oh yeah. And then, yeah, that's fine. 
set it down that way. So wait, we said the other way, right? So we mm -hmm. should turn the stand around. Okay, you got that. Whew. That is very heavy. Mm -hmm. There we go. And then we gotta put these screws in there. Let's see here. We got some screws. Got the two feet. So we just have to set it up like this and then connect the TV. So the bottom of these actually have the two holes, a bigger and a smaller hole that line up with the stand. So it's pretty easy. They just go in one way and then you just put the two screws facing straight down. Do you want to do the same on the other side? Cool. So now the TV just sits on that top little spot and then we have two screws on each side to put into the back of the TV. So let's pick up the TV and set on the stand. Let's do it. All right. You ready to lift this? Yeah, do you want to take the plastic off first? Yeah, probably should. You want to lift it out? Yeah. Ready? One, two, three. Let's set it on the ground. Let's just set it on the ground for a second. Just until we're good. All right, you ready to lift it in place? Yep, let's All do right, it. Let's go. Just set it down. Wow, that is really <laughs> easy to do. Wow, that's the easiest one. Heavy stand, but very easy. So we just hooked it on that peg that was attached to the TV, and you can do this forward or backwards. It just catches the taller one if it's the other way. And then we just put these two screws in to lock it up, and it's set. But yeah, pretty cool looking stand. It's behind the TV so you don't see it. And from the front, very low profile. Cool, good job. There we go. Let's move the TV forward a bit, get the stand here so we can show them what it looks like on the stand, yeah? Let's do it. All right, ready? One, two, three. Let's get, move it forward a little bit. Okay, so for lifting this, I think we just tip it forward a little bit and then get our hand under the back, set it up there, move our hand, and then tip it back up. That's gonna be our easiest way. Sounds good. Easy. You wanna do that right forward, ready? One, two, three. Oh, you got to get it a little further out there. There we go. And set it down. Cool, cool. Do you want to do the honors and take the plastic off? I do. Okay. Oh, it's pretty. So initially, when I took the, the foam off, you see how thin this is. And we've done some of the Sony LEDs and, and it's, you know, probably at least an inch yeah. thick on those ones. And this is like really nice and thin here. So um, I can't wait to turn it on. Yeah, this is a pretty good looking TV. Yeah. And I like the low profile stand. It looks really cool from the front. And then you have that piece on the back. Of course, you need some stability there. It's very solid. It does tip back a bit. Like yeah. it's interesting. It tips back more than I thought it might. I'm, I'm assuming we have the stand on right. We'll give it a look, but it, it's a pretty foolproof stand, so I don't think we screwed that up or anything, but let's get back here and check out the features. On the back, you can see it's pretty similar to the LEDs from Sony, the X95K. You have that nice square pattern. It looks like there's a couple speakers there. On the front, you also have the acoustic surface speakers. And then over here, you have the center input. So you can actually connect your wired system to this and use the TV as a center channel. It has the remote IR in and the video input with the S Center speaker in where you can connect something like the HTA9 Sony system or the A7000 and then a USB or two and we have HDMI one on the side and then on the bottom you have three more HDMIs. Number three and four HDMI 2.1s where you can connect 4K at 120 hertz for gaming and three is the ARC eARC port so you're able to connect that to a sound bar or speaker system, pretty cool. And then you can connect the remote, optical, LAN, and the cable or antenna. You also have the ATS-C 3.0 tuner on this TV, so you'll get HD antenna channels, pretty awesome. Cool. And don't forget this brand. Yeah. We also have to connect that Bravia cam. Should we grab that and connect okay. it now? Let's do it. So you have the ability to open and close the shutter here or like cover the lens so that literally it can't see you pretty neat red when it's covered open there you go and then it just like clicks in it's pretty straightforward you want to give it a whirl sure all right there you go there we go and then just pop it over and you can just tip it over there is your cam
if you just don't want the camera on and that's just not a feature that you like, then there's this little cover plate here that you can put in place of the camera. Cool. The camera is a little wobbly. I mean, you're not going to be moving your TV much, I don't think. It's got some movement to it. It's just not super secure there. Obviously, no one's swinging these TVs around, so should be good. See how it looks from the front. And then there you go. You want to pull that plastic off the front? Oh, of course. Ooh, more plastic. Meow. Awesome. I think it's time to show the remote and turn this sucker on. What do you think? Let's do it. Yeah. So this is a great remote here from Sony, a nice upgrade. It's got this nice like brushed pewter look here, color. Um, you've got some of these convenience buttons here for some of your often used apps. And then no numbers, thankfully, because who needs numbers on their remote anymore? You know, your volume and your channel buttons and this nice little directional pad and back button here as well. And one of my favorite things about these Sony remotes is that it lights up in the dark. How cool is that? So if you're watching TV in bed, you can figure out what buttons you're trying to hit without a problem. Nice. I love this feature. Okay, enough of all these external features. Let's get the sucker turned on. All right, so we're on the home screen here and I wanna just check the settings because a lot of times Sony TVs don't come as punchy as they can. They look a little dull when they're on this first screen. They just don't have all the settings properly set. I did turn off this power saving mode so you don't have that pulling down the brightness and then you can also turn off the ambient light sensor. Those two things will help you have full brightness when you're in a brighter room or wherever. And then you can go in, you can change picture mode. I typically use the custom mode because it's pretty accurate. And then you go down from there and you can mess with all the settings, brightness and all this, get it exactly how you'd want. Uh, as you can see, a lot of this stuff is down. Uh, peak luminance is set to medium where you can crank that up to high. And that just alone gives you a little bit more brightness. We can mess with these settings or you could check out a settings video. But really what I want to get to is back to the home screen so I can show you this Google TV operating system. This is the second year of this operating system and it has a lot of features, all kinds of content. You can see that we have YouTube TV, so it shows us what is live on that YouTube TV on its own home screen where you don't have to go into YouTube TV yet. You also have movies and shows and you can download different apps, of course. And then it has kind of some customization so you can get into these input settings and picture stuff over here. It does have this cool ambient mode. You can press it there or you can press back on your remote when you're on the home screen and it'll display different pieces of artwork, which is pretty cool. Has the time in the bottom right corner and the artist in the bottom left corner. If I have an OLED like this QD OLED, I'm not sure I want it on all the time displaying art. Longevity is an issue with something that pushes light through an organic material. So that's the same with this QD OLED versus a traditional OLED. It still is organic material. So I probably would just set this to turn off after maybe 15 minutes of non-use. And my initial impressions of just this operating system is that it's nice and quick. And overall, I like Google TV probably the best of all the operating systems just because I'm used to Google. It's straightforward. Everything seems to be well positioned and easy to access. And I find that I can find all the apps that I want to use and there's a lot of good content to watch. And while looking at this, I want to note that it looks quite bright and colorful. I really think that these QD OLEDs are a great combination of traditional OLED and bright LED. So it's almost like you have the best of both worlds with the QD OLED, which is probably why it won best 4K TV of the year. And new this year on just this A95K and the Z9K, you have the Bravia Cam. We watched a video to see how the Bravia Cam would function and there's all kinds of cool things you can do. You can use it to gesture control, volume up, volume down. If you're too close, it'll let you know to back up away from the screen for best visibility. And when searching online, it does say that Google Duo should be functional. So we popped on Google Duo and made a call with Jen to find that the camera works 
and it looks really good actually for a camera on a TV. So good to go if you wanna make a video call, but we couldn't really get much of the other functionality to work. So it's likely going to get better as the firmware is updated, but as of now, it doesn't look like all of the Bravia Cam features are working. But let's get into some SDR content to show you how this would look if you just have traditional cable or you're watching sports or maybe some of these other movies. So let's do that now. So once I turned on YouTube TV right off the bat, I noticed it was bright and vibrant looked really good, the motion looked great. I thought that the upscaling was really good, except I scooted up a little closer to the TV. Noticed there's a little pixelation. It wasn't quite as defined as I thought, but I went into the settings and I increased the random noise reduction from off to medium and the digital noise reduction as well to medium and the smooth gradation to high. And it, it smoothed out the picture quite a bit. Again, the motion looks great. And now I think everything looks fantastic on SDR. But just watching this in my living room, there's really no reflections, even though we have some lights on in here. And this would be an easy thumbs up with regard to watching cable and sports and all this stuff in a pretty well lit room. So, so far so good with SDR. Typically when I'm watching SDR, Jen is reading her book or snoozing. So I'm gonna bring her back in because we're gonna look at some HDR footage now, maybe some movies. What about some Obi-Wan Kenobi or something? Yeah, let's do it. Let's see. All right, so we got to go to the home screen here, hit home twice, there we go, and then we'll jump down into Disney+. Plus. We're only on like the third episode, so this could be good. Okay, so we're watching Obi-Wan Kenobi, and I mean, the intro looks so cool. Pixel level control, you can see just how detailed it is, and just any LED cannot compete with that sort of highlight. This QD OLED is extremely bright in those small highlights as well, even brighter than I think the A90J and other OLEDs that I've had in the past. But really, this show is not the best one to show you with regards to impact at what HDR can really do. So why don't we switch it up to Encanto, a movie that we've shown many times that can highlight some of the full screen screen HDR brightness that we would expect to see. When watching Obi-Wan and the Encanto sing-along as we're watching it here, the audio is amazing on this TV. It's really good as these acoustic surface speakers have been for the last couple years. I love listening to them. It's one of the only TVs that I would say you don't need to have a soundbar for. But again, having a sound system will only make your viewing experience with this great TV even better. But if you're watching cable TV, movies, sports, whatever it may be, this TV these speakers can hang with the best of them. We have this in Dolby Vision Bright, and I have the live color set to high and the advanced contrast up. That's just the way I like to watch HDR movies, and wow, it is incredibly punchy. This looks really good. We've watched this scene on every TV that we brought into the house so far, and this is by far the most detail and the most punch outside of a couple LED, QLED TVs, like the QN90B, which had a lot of brightness and full screen brightness, of course but you don't get that individual pixel control or perfect contrast of this QD OLED. So I'd have to say that this is the most impactful version of this scene that we've seen so far. But let's get into some gaming because this TV can game, even though some people think Sony TVs aren't the best, I'll show you they are. So now we're in game mode, Call of Duty Warzone. And you know, I have to admit, this looks amazing. Incredibly good detail, bright and vibrant colors. The response time is really good. I know that there's a couple of TVs like the LG or Samsung, OLEDs and QD OLEDs that might be slightly faster, maybe slightly better for gaming, but for someone like me, this is just fine and it looks amazing. Two HDMI 2.1 ports that can do 4K at 120. One of them is the eARC port, so if you had a soundbar or speaker system and two game consoles, it would be more difficult to get everything running at 4K at 120, unless your receiver can pass through that 4K at 120 signal, which a lot of them are starting to be able to do. So really, if you're that big of a gamer but you want amazing cinema quality picture, then you just get a receiver that can send that signal to your TV and you're good to go. But when you're playing in a bright scene or a dark scene trying to hide from enemies, you can see everything with an amazing picture quality and super low input lag with this instant response. This TV is amazing for gaming. And one thing that I really haven't noticed on this TV in any of the content is that dirty screen or screen uniformity issues. So let's check that test out because that's one thing before we compare it to the A90J that I wanted to show you. Okay, so what you're looking for on this test is you watch the hockey player moving left or right, and you try to see if you notice any like blotchy areas behind the hockey player as you go by. It would be simulated in fast sports or video gaming at a high rate, and for the most part, I see nothing. These QD OLEDs are amazing with regards to screen uniformity, and that showed up in that 4K shootout. Both the QD OLED scored very highly in that, the S95B and this A95K, while the LG G2 traditional W OLED struggled. So definitely a big win for these Samsung displays 
display QD OLEDs. And honestly, it's like the only test that I really wanted to show on here and it scores quite well on that. So I'm pretty stoked about this TV overall, but let's compare it to the A90J before we wrap up. So here we are comparing the A90J on the right Master Series OLED versus the A95K QD OLED on the left. And as you can see, we actually flipped the QD OLED around on the stand. So we had to unscrew the stand, lift the TV, flip it around, set it up onto the stand so it's about an inch higher than it was, and then screw it back in. And I actually like it better flipped around like this because it can be close to the wall and it can provide that cover if you have to run cords down the wall. You won't even see them like this. In addition, it actually helps the TV stand more upright where if you have the TV stand flipped toward the back, the TV sort of tips back a little bit. And if you have ceiling lights in your room, then those will be more evident on the screen as it's angling toward those in the reflection. So I like it facing forward and with it up against the wall. And as you can see compared to the A90J, the A95K is just a little bit brighter and has a little bit more color. And I think the detail is a little bit more evident in the darker areas on the screen. The QD OLED has a little more color in general but you can definitely see it pushes a little more green. It has a little bit more blues. So having that blue layer QD OLED that then steps down to the different colors and can be much more vibrant just gives you more of that QLED kind of color in an OLED TV. And just to let you know, the settings on these two are both exactly the same. It's in custom mode. It's on brightness preferred. We have the live color on medium. We could juice both of them a little bit more and it gives the QD OLED even a little bit more of an advantage. But this looked good on screen where we could show you that there's definitely more detail in the QD OLED and yet it's not just pushed to the max like it's not in vivid mode it isn't custom mode it looks really nice now the A90J on the right is calibrated and it looks a little bit greener the tint to it and the A95K on the left looks like it has a little bit more red to it so if we calibrated the white point to match the Sony A90J it might be a little closer I'm not really sure but we'll have to ask someone that's into the calibration field about that I will have a more in-depth comparison between these two TVs, so definitely look forward to that. And let me know in the comments what you think. I have this A90J on the right, it's 65 inch. The largest size of the A95K, also 65 inch. So I'm not sure there's a big enough difference between these two TVs that would make it worth the upgrade for me. But the QD OLED's obviously awesome, so anyone looking for a 65 inch or 55 inch TV, it's the king of TVs in 2022. So let me know what you think. Would you guys upgrade to the A95K from the a 90 J, or would you have to get a bigger screen? Because I think I'm going to have to get a 77 or an 83 inch QD OLED to want to upgrade from one $4,000 TV to another. Let me know in the comments. I want to thank Sony for sending me this awesome 65 inch A95K. I'm looking forward to getting more videos out of this. And of course, I want to thank my lovely wife, Jen, for helping out. As usual, she's the best. Make sure to smash the like button, subscribe, set the notification bell to all so you're notified on the next video upload. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys on the next video.